Hey, welcome back to Ahead of the Curve. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed. Today, I have a guest with me who is a chronic pain health coach, fellow scoliosis and spinal fusion warrior from Ontario, Canada. And um, her name is at Agnes Shimzik. Welcome, Agnes. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to talk to you and hear about your story a little bit more. Um, we were talking beforehand just a little bit, and I know some things that I've gathered through our Instagram mm -hmm. interactions. I've loved seeing some of the things that you post and, and learning a few things about new things about chronic pain. Um, but I'm looking forward to hearing more of, of your story, how you got mm -hmm. into doing what you're doing now. So um, can you just start off by telling us a little bit about your schooly story mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of how it led to where you are today? Yeah. So my story started when, well, thinking back, it's a long time ago, over 30 years ago. Um, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. I had a surgery a year after because that was the best option at that time. Um, you know, I selected the surgery versus um, the brace because at that time, you know, I was told I will end up having surgery anyway. I never experienced any pain before the surgery. I, you know, the scoliosis didn't bother me. I was a regular teenager, not really understanding what's, you know, what's happening, what it means. There was nobody else that I knew of that had scoliosis in my town. I lived in a very small town. Um, and, you know, it wasn't until I was in my 30s that actually I started experiencing pain and that pain would just occur more often. It was in my lower back. Um, and, you know, I led a very busy, demanding job. I was busy running with kids from activities to activities, never really did anything about it, never bothered to exercise or even think that, I, you know, I should be thinking about my back or like from even like strength perspective. I'm not even like talking about, you know, I did went to the physios for the chronic pain. I've seen a lot of different specialists over the years, spend a lot of money in a typical, you know, fashion as we do when we experience pain. Um, but never really did anything in terms of strength training or even like understanding how the body works. What are the things we can do for ourselves to really take care of our body and ourselves in a loving way? Um, and it wasn't until uh, between my second and my third um, daughter that that chronic pain started, uh, you know, I started experiencing it almost weekly. And then it turned into debilitating pain when my youngest was just a toddler and I ended up in bed um, on another round of, you know, anti-inflammatories, Tylenol-3 at that time, getting depressed from using that Tylenol-3. Um, Googling all the practitioners, scoliosis, spinal fusion, trying to reach out within Canada, who knows something about it? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know anybody else at that time who yeah. had scoliosis or a spinal fusion. You know, over the years, as I was, you know, experiencing the pain, it never occurred to me to start looking for community or start looking for other people who experienced mm -hmm. something like that. Um, um, so, you know, spending that week in bed with depression, I kind of come to the realization there has to be a better way out. Like there has to be a way out of it. Like no way, you know, being in the just early 40s, this is like, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of the life. Um, at that time, I found a practitioner who referred me to orthopedic surgeon here in Canada, one of the top orthopedic surgeons in my area. And, you know, um, I was told that there were two ways really for me to break the pain cycle. The cortisol shots, which I've been told, you know, because of my spinal fusion, there wasn't a lot of places that will even take me as a client because of the risk or full spinal fusion surgery, which wasn't something that I wanted to do because of the you know, quality of life impact. Um, 
So, you know, thankfully the age we are in, I started Googling and started looking for different alternatives. And that's, you know, that's how, that's what led me to really starting to explore the chronic pain more from mind body perspective and looking at body holistically, learning how I can support my body, you know, from a whole nutrition, anti-inflammatory perspective, looking at the lifestyle factors that impact our life that you know, when I did that self-assessment, I wasn't at that time even meeting one of those criteria. Um, I was somebody who, you know, who drank five coffees a day, not ever thinking about, you know, hydration or fascia or how that may even mean that I just feel stiffer in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can can I interrupt here and just kind of backtrack a little bit, just out yes. of curiosity uh, about your experience with some things? Um, yes. So, you know, we have a, a lot of women who either have scoliosis, have had spinal fusion. They're not mothers yet, but this is mm -hmm. something in their mind that they're considering doing in the future. And there's a lot of fear surrounding that. And mm -hmm. Um, it sounds like you more or less kind of breezily went through um, your your pregnancy and delivery. Mm -hmm. Can you like share your experience mm. about that a little bit? Amazing question. So I actually did really well with my first one, which um, all my kids are nine years apart. And there's reason to this madness. <laughs> My first one, I was in my 20s. So obviously that one was easy breezy. Like I did not think my second one, because she was eight pounds. She was a heavier baby for me. I started experiencing like lower back pain, but that wasn't, you know, as challenging. And the third one um, was my most challenging um, pregnancy. I actually ended up on a sick leave from work at three months pregnant. And, you know, um, you know, going back, if I knew about the mind-body approach, I would definitely apply that work at that time. I didn't know. And there was nobody that would take me being three, four months pregnant who would even want to see me to assess me properly. So I was just under care of my like OBG who didn't know what to do with me. So they right. just, you know, put me on a leave and they said, it's don't rest. move just rest what I did though is at that time I got a private yoga instructor who did things very gently and slowly with me and I did hypno birding I don't know if you've heard it's you know it's a it's more like a mindfulness method with some movements um you know I had some other complications with that pregnancy where my young my youngest at that time she was breached two weeks before I was due and I was told because of my fusion they couldn't do epidural so that means like you gotta keep they were trying to figure out what to do with mm -hmm. me so hypnobirding helped me at that time because they had specific exercises for how to you know in a gentle way help the baby to move mm -hmm. um, and I've applied all the methods so that's you know thinking back it should clue in there's like mind component to everything we do and yeah. to everything within our body but you know somehow I I went to being busy mom after that wow yeah well thank you for sharing that that's that's helpful for people to understand and hear your experience mm -hmm. and know mm -hmm. that it's possible to to go through that and successfully children yeah yeah, totally. And like, and for me, you know, I had to have all of the birds natural, like there wasn't anything except morphine that I was able to get because of my fusion. I was assessed as a high risk for the hospitals over here. So they told me, oh, you can get morphine. And, you know, from that perspective, like I've done my research into the risks and what that would be for the baby. So that wasn't something I was comfortable with taking, yeah. but yeah. But it's totally doable, I do believe. And I do, you know, um, I did practice like a lot of mindfulness, so like that hypnobirthing mm -hmm. babies. That is like a mindfulness method with actions and with, you know, specific steps. So I do believe that helped me Yeah, a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. powerful to understand. Mm -hmm. So after you were um, on your... Um, Sorry, 
no, I lost my train of thought. So, um, you know, you were experiencing the chronic pain and mm -hmm. you were determined to figure mm -hmm. a way out of that chronic mm -hmm. pain. Yep. What kind of came next in your journey with that? Yeah, so I first actually approached that from more anti-inflammatory perspective. So I went and I completed studies at integrate integrative nutrition school. Mm -hmm. So that includes both like nutrition component as well as lifestyle components. So that helped me understand how, you know, the way I was leading my life wasn't really supportive of, you know, of of my body, not only my body, of like what I really wanted to do. Like I was always high achiever, very busy at both work and home, never, you know, took a second to decompress, to de-stress. So that was my first step and that helped a lot, but I found it didn't take me all the way out of the pain. So my second thing that I did is I started work working with pain psychology center out of the States. Hmm. And that was funded by Alan Gordon. Um, I started working with them and applying their, you know, techniques. Um, and I loved it so much. I got certified and that's, you know, that's what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And that's powerful for you because your clients mm -hmm. that you work with, they can relate to you. You can relate to them very well. You know, I find that kind of with what I do as well. Yeah. Having experienced mm -hmm. school camps with myself, that just kind mm -hmm. of gives you another layer of it does. Mm -hmm. It does. Yes. I hear stories about, you know, not being able to get up from bed, go to the bathroom. And I'm like, I remember those days. I remember how it was difficult. Like my lowest point for me was, you know, my, my, when my youngest started walking, I couldn't pick her up and she was a baby. So for her to like get a hug from me, she had to come in when I was lying down on the sofa on the side, I would hug her. Because she couldn't even sit on my knees because I had this, you know, I was in pain. So obviously you sit on my knees, on my lap. Uh, you think the pain will be like, you know what I mean? You are afraid, all these different emotions and feeling come in. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, now being, she's being almost nine, I can just pick her up. And anytime I do that, she's like, she wants everybody to stop in the house because mommy's picking her up <laughs> because she still has those memories where I just couldn't do it for the longest time, right? that's so sweet yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes little you know announcement and let's let's look mama can pick me up <laughs> yeah oh um why why do you think that it is so hard for people who have a condition like scoliosis mm -hmm. to overcome their chronic pain um, so part of it, I think, is when we go and when we get, you know, when we get assessed, we hear all these big buzzwords and they seem scary. So we either being told we have degenerative disc disease and like, even for me, when I say it, oh my goodness, it's like yeah. something serious, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, you know, it's just, I think it's, there's still a lot we can do in terms of, you know, promoting and talking about the brain and brain's role, how we create the thoughts and that story, right? That is behind our thoughts uh, because our brains are so powerful. And, you know, as soon as we have these big words, the diagnosis, we just, it will run with it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Our, and yeah. So I feel part of it is that part of it is it's really looking at the whole body holistically and there's still work we can do, you know, when it comes to the medical field in terms of everybody understanding that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. there, there's mm -hmm. so many different elements and ways that you can tackle pain. So it doesn't have mm -hmm. to look that way uh, to yeah. help, help somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, mm -hmm. what has helped you the most, like, so if you could pull like one or two elements mm -hmm. from what you learned at that school, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the, the two, one or two biggest things yeah. that do the most? Yeah. So I love sharing that story after that fourth car accident. 
because I find it is so powerful. And I think that brings really, you know, when you in that moment, when you have to use something, this is what I did. And I think anybody can relate it. So as soon as we were hit from behind, um, I did like a CPR on myself. There were two components and I love calling it CPR because literally that's how I felt in that moment. Mm -hmm. because of that story you know you can be in the car accident because with your back like it's like the worst thing that can happen to you so my CPR was twofold the first piece was really sending myself messages of safety so in my head just telling myself you are safe nothing happened your car was just touched from behind you'll be okay you'll walk out of it with yeah. no impact and the second thing I did, because realizing after all, we were in car accident, I'm not dismissing that, is anytime, you know, something big, big happens, our body will, as it should, just create a bit of inflammation for our body to hold with it. So I've, you know, very simple anti-inflammatory protocol that I did, you know, that day, I just rested a little bit more, I just let my body relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I, you know, just simple things. I hydrated it a little bit more because we want, you know, the things moving, even the emotions that are get stuck with it. You know, we don't think about water helping, but mm -hmm. it does help yeah. with, you know, yeah, with that movement. Yeah, so I, I feel these two things that I've kind of learned, like applying the different skills in a very simple way. Anyone can do that just sending you know the messages of safety and thinking what are the good things I can do for myself at this moment versus rushing in and going about the life and not letting that you know whatever happen not processing that process mm -hmm. yeah so how what what do you do now what does it look like you know mm -hmm. as far as your business goes how do you help mm -hmm. people how, mm -hmm. how does that all work yeah, so I work in a very small container with, you know, limited number of clients because I've kind of learned my lesson in life. <laughs> having a history of burnout too. Um, yeah, and I really focus on, you know, on clients with who have that burning desire to get better mm -hmm. um, and who are looking for, who are looking for that one-on-one -on -one help. Um, a lot of times, you know, that session may look different for everybody. I kind of meet the client where they are. Some of the clients start more on anti-inflammatory on that lifestyle. What that, you know, what are the supporting lifestyle choices that I can make every day to support the, you know, the brain processing work that we're doing. Um, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. I, I, I love doing what I do. <laughs> I literally, most of the time, I feel like going on the rooftops and screaming, like there's no reason to be in pain. Yeah, yeah, it's so <laughs> true. How mm -hmm. how long do you generally work with people? Is there a big range or is there like kind of like a set you know, roadmap that people follow? I know yes. that healing and recovery yeah. is different, but yeah. Just it is, it is. So, you know, it really depends on the client because Oh, and on their belief right to heal so you know depending where they are again for some it may just take a little bit longer if we have to also anchor that belief and you know reinforce it right mm -hmm. um so you know i some of my clients they come in and they we can apply right away the different steps for some of the clients you know they have they know this is the work they have to like intuitively they know they'll come seek seeking this work but that belief piece where you know but my doctor told me I have structural issues yeah. is that my is my pain coming so it's really working through you know these are the studies we know you know it, that just because we have a degenerative this disease it doesn't mean we have pain it's you know based on studies it's not one on one to one correspondence so it really depends mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. how can how can people find you and connect with you and learn more mm -hmm. about what you do yeah they can find me on my website at the simple beautiful wellness.com on instagram at this the same handle at the simple beautiful wellness 
and on Facebook under my name Agnes Shemchark. Maybe I should spell it out. We'll we'll have that in the show notes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> People will be able to copy and paste of me. <laughs> yes, I struggle with spelling out. I'm sorry. So if somebody would do, I would be like scribbling. I'm like, did you say S or Z? <laughs> that is yeah. That that's challenging. <laughs> sometimes it's almost like you know you're back at the elementary school where you have to like <laughs> you have to use like the I don't know if you uh do the military spelling but where you my like... husband does my husband does yes <laughs> I mean that not works me. <laughs> yeah but it's just not, not... <laughs> oh um my my last question for you and what I like to ask people that I interview um mm -hmm. What are you doing in your life right now that mm -hmm. is ahead of the curve? That's the name of the, the podcast. So like, is mm -hmm. there a book that you're reading that other people mm -hmm. should know about or something that you're listening to? Yes. Can I reach out? Give me a second. It's an amazing yeah. book. I'm just. Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, I read books. So there's mm -hmm. actually, if I can add two, so if anybody's interested in pain reprocessing therapy, the way out by Alan Gordon, I recommend to everybody who's talking to me. But this book is amazing. The Mountain is You. It actually goes into um, brain and how our thoughts can impact our lives and you know limiting beliefs and then the work you can do on your own. It's very simple to follow, very easy steps highly recommend all of my clients will be getting this yes I love that <laughs> well thank you so much for sharing that with you with us and uh, sharing your story with us it was awesome getting to connect thank and you. know you a little bit more so um, thank you everybody who's been tuning in until next time stay well and stay ahead of the curve